good afternoon. Wasn't that a wonderful morning together? So thankful for that. We're going to start off with a song this afternoon and then get right into the scriptures. But uh, let's grab our song books as we're finding our seats. We're going to be over at page number 457. 457, let's all stand together. To God be the glory, great things he hath done now. you thankful for Jesus. I read a statement this week. Someone asked their pastor. They said, Pastor, should we only take our big things to God or should we take our little things to God also? And he looked back at him and he said, you got to understand that nothing is big in God's sight. (laughs) And so every prayer request we take before him And any answer to prayer, anything that God does is great, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's because that's who he is, so he can't help it. Let's open in a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for meeting with us throughout this day. Thank you for the message and song that we were able to hear this morning. Thank you for all the work and dedication that went into the preparation. Thank you for speaking to our hearts, encouraging us, but then, Lord, challenging us. Lord, it doesn't matter if someone's 75 years old and been part of the church for 50 years, if they've never been born again. The Bible says they'll not see the kingdom of God. And, Lord, thank you for the message of the word of God. Now be with us this afternoon. May it be a sweet time as we look at your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's take our Bibles this afternoon and turn over to Isaiah chapter number 54. Isaiah chapter number 54. Lord willing, this week we will be closing on the property next door. The holdup is not us and it's not the seller. It's just the bank getting everything together as far as the appraisal coming in and uh, finalizing paperwork, things along those lines. About 
five years ago now, a little over five years, when we when we were preparing to buy this piece of property, so it would have been in July of 2015 when we were preparing to buy this piece of property. Um, we were able to have a church meeting, and I was thankful for it and what God did. And you can tell everything moved forward. We're on the property now. I told the church, because the church at that point was not even two years old yet. We had officially started Bible studies in September of 2013 and officially chartered and organized the church in November of 15. So we were not even um, uh, November of 13. And so we weren't even two years old yet. And uh, I told the church, here we were stepping out uh, to buy a piece of property and then to be able to remodel a building. And I say remodel, really build, because it was a dirt floor. By the time we were done, we probably could have just taken this metal structure um, off the foundation because we built walls. The only thing we didn't do is put a roof on, and we did that three years later. <laughs> but uh, as we talked towards that, I told the church this, and this time is fastly approaching. I said, church, I said, um, praying much, I said, because we're getting ready to step out as a church, and we're not even two years old, and we're going to be trusting God for a half a million dollars. And now we know the rest of the story. God's taken care of it, <laughs> and God's provided. And I'll say this, we've seen God do that before. And you say, well, that was the first time for our church. But I'll say this, I've been around men of God and families and ministries that have just taught me to trust God and just watch God do it. Someone said it this week, they said it's, it's not the, the matter of the faith that we struggle with sometimes. He said in my personal life, he said, because we've seen it all of our lives. We've seen God do it. He said, where the struggle is in my life is making sure I don't get ahead of his timing. <laughs> of us stepping out saying, well, bless God, he's going to take care of it. We've seen him do it before. But God may be saying, but I don't want to do it at this moment, but I'll do it at this moment. And so that timing, when you have the timing and the faith lined up together in God's perfect will, then guess what? It's a wonderful thing that merges together. But I told the church, I said, we're less than two years old. And I said, it's not the half a million dollars. I said, that is scaring me at this point. I said, I honestly believe 100% settled in my heart. God's taking care of this. I said, but what I do start thinking about is if we're not even two years old and God's stretching us at this point, I said, what's he going to stretch us for in our faith to trust him in the next 10 years? And I said, God has some wonderful things in store. And I'm so thankful for that. And God's provided, God's met the needs and God's taken care of things. That's why we sing songs like to God be the glory. We understand that it's not us. We understand it's not one individual, but it is this body of Christ that God is using to be able to reach our region. Isaiah 54, several years ago in my personal studies, and if I have the privilege and a young person usually comes up and says, would you sign my Bible and I can remember you and pray for you? I'll come back and I'll sign Isaiah 54, verses two and three. I've tried to hold on to these for years. Um, William Carey preached this message back in the 1700s. I put it in the bulletin last week where he preached a message, expect, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. And he preached it out of Isaiah 54, verses 2 and 3, that says, Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited." Now, may I say this? I understand the context of the verses of Scripture. I understand about he's given promises to the nation of Israel. I understand that. 
But may I say this, for years now, God has burdened my heart that it's not enough just to stay complacent in the work of God or our relationship with God. And God has constantly challenged my heart, expect great things. But then not just expect great things, because listen, there's another half to that. We can sit back all day long and say, we're just waiting for God to do something. Well, there was a second half to that message, attempt great things. Now, you know, I, I may not... I may not always succeed at everything that I've ever done, but I've told some people, I said, you know, I, you, you give me someone that has failed five times over someone who's never failed at all in their life. And someone said, why is that? Well, if you've never failed in your life, you've never tried anything. It's just how it is. Now, I'm not talking you fail on God and you're in miserable sin. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I'm thankful every time we've stepped out for God, guess what? It works. And God's always provided. And so I am still in the spiritual mindset and heart of expect great things from God. But at the same time, we can't just sit down and say, well, it'll all happen. No, we attempt great things. And I believe this. I believe that the world is looking and they're searching and they're wondering and they're ripe to see God of heaven do something great in our midst. Do you know the testimony that this church has around our community? It's tremendous. I thank the Lord for it. I mean, they say how beautiful the property is going by and tell people that we're under contract for that. The zoning board, there were at least two of them out of the five that said, well, I sat back on the, on the zoning board five years ago when you came before, and one of them said this, if I remember correctly, because I went back and read over the notes, I believe Pastor said he'd be coming back needing more variances anyway because the ministry was going to grow. <laughs> and here he is. And so praise the Lord for it. Attempt great things, expect great things. Let me share some of the things that uh, our church is dreaming big about. Okay? Now listen, this isn't, it, it's not a big question and answer time on what's the flooring going to be in that building and, and what's the size of that room going to be. And, and uh, it, it's not those kind of details. Here's what we're going to do. Lord willing, we're closing this week. And then, Lord willing, within the next two weeks, we're going to sit down with an architect, if that's the right person to sit down with, and say, okay, here's our wish list. Let's maximize this property. Let's fit everything in that we possibly can. You say right now? No, but we got to have a plan going forward. I don't want us to get to the point that we build something and then all of a sudden we closed ourselves off from the rest of the property, okay? So get this thing laid out. How many believe in proper planning ahead of time, okay? So here's, here's just some of the things. The property starts right next to us, has 399 or 390 feet of frontage that goes all the way over just before you get to Shell Gas Station. And then it goes back just over 1,000 feet just down to the river. And so there's actually three lots that make up just over 10 acres, 10.34 if I'm being exact. 10.34, we have just over five acres here, so we'll have about 15 and a half acres that God would have given to us right here on the main road. At some point, let me start right here and work our way across, okay? And so at some point, there'll be a new auditorium building right next to this one, okay? And so it'll be right next to this, Lord willing, within about 10 or 15 feet of this building because that way we can have a hallway connector between the two buildings and walk right into a brand new auditorium over there. There'll be parking on the other side of it 
handicapped accessibility, ground level, just coming right into it, okay? We can enter in through here. This is where the hallway would be a wonderful opening so we don't have to cut another hole in the wall. Wonderful opening for a hallway coming in right here and then divide all of this off into Sunday school spaces. And we can have an education wing up here, okay? And so, and it was a great idea not to make them little tiny 10 by 12s, um, but to make them bigger classrooms and so I think it was it you that made mention, Miss Melissa. We were talking about Sunday schools or something, and, and it would just be good to divide it right here at these natural petitions and be able to build some walls here and, and have a hallway down the middle here and have six or eight Sunday school rooms up through here. And so new auditorium built next door here with a full walkout basement to access to down back in the parking lot because then we can still utilize these parking lots here for people to be able to come into the education wing for Sunday school and then come into the, um, the new auditorium and, and fellowship hall downstairs. Inside that building, here's some ideas that have been put in, okay? These are not all original with me. And so if I start calling out names, I'm gonna forget someone and it was your idea, okay? So besides petitioning this off, I'm not gonna mention any other names as we go through. But uh, here's what's been mentioned in that building, not just an auditorium. And of course, people have asked, are we going to have a real baptistry? Yes, we would, okay? And uh, praise the Lord for that. But uh, of course, we'll, we'll move church offices over there, okay? And then here's an idea that was put in is why not, and put it in the church building, why not put a bookstore in, okay? And uh, it would be a, a smaller scale bookstore, um, we, we wouldn't even look to be going in competing with Amazon and everything, okay? But to be able to have some Bibles, be able to have some books, someone mentioned just a good place to be able to get some greeting cards or some birthday cards or, or uh, things along those lines, okay? Um, some little trinkets and decorations, okay? To be able to have little signs, little gospel saying, things like that in a, in a, in a Bible bookstore, um, someone mentioned, uh, I told him I'm not going to give names, um, about maybe little tools for being able to study the Bible, whether it be good pens that, that don't bleed through your Bible or, or uh, like my dad used to carry around a little six-inch ruler for underlining, just things like that um, to be able to have in a bookstore that it could be open before service, after service, and even sometimes during the week for people to be able to come in and be able to have that, okay? And uh, so that's been mentioned to be able to put it in there. Um, to be able to have a place, to be able to come into the, to the church building, um, you can think what you want. I'd love to have a nice little coffee shop and sit in sitting area, and uh, to be able to go sit down, let it be run. Here's, here's just some ideas that have been thrown out there. Let it be run either by our senior saints or let it be run by our, our teenagers and it, by donation or our young adults for, for a certain fund to be able to do activities, be able to have things like that going. But then around the foyer area, not just like we have here, two hard pews that are out there, but why not through that foyer area, why not have some places set up that you can actually sit down and fellowship and talk with someone at church? Wouldn't that be a blessing if there were actually some comfortable chairs out in a foyer and a couple couches or something, not to sleep on, but to be able to sit down and to be able to actually fellowship before or after service stretched out around our foyer in different areas. You get a cup of coffee and sit down and uh, be able to fellowship one with another. And so plus the church offices and then be able to have access to be able to come over and this would turn into our education wing, okay? And then the downstairs be able to put in, be able to have some nice restrooms down there and a full commercial kitchen. And so the size of that building, the downstairs would be a full fellowship hall. How many would appreciate more room to be able to stretch out in a fellowship hall to be able to have full commercial kitchen, have a fellowship hall downstairs and, uh, and be able to have that accessible from upstairs or you could just walk right in the downstairs. You say, what's the size of that building going to be? Well, we're probably talking on that first building, we're probably talking about 100 by 140 or something like that to be able to maximize all of this space right next to us as far back as we could go. Of course, we have to get with architects and engineers, okay? And so that's just the basic of things to put in a new auditorium, 
okay? And to be able to have more space over there for worshiping the Lord and watch the church grow, okay? You say, well, how big? We're not gonna get into how big you think the church ought to be. We're gonna trust the Lord to be able to bring in the people to Granite State Baptist Church and put as many people here as he desires to be here at Granite State. And, um, and so um, at least that building would be seating for at least 400. And uh, trust the Lord to be able to take care of it from there, okay? You say, you get into 400 people, we're just gonna watch what the Lord does, okay? And uh, trust him to be able to do it, okay? And then we separate this. I'll come back to this building here. So then immediately following um, on the other side of our new auditorium, we'd put in some more parking, okay? So then people can pull in there, come right into the church building, or people can utilize these parking spots over here and to be able to come into the building. You say, why is that? Well, the closer we build that building, the less footprint of parking that we need on that side because we'll utilize all of these 85, 87 parking spots that we have now, okay? So we can utilize these coming into the building and those on the other side coming into the building. Well, then it's been mentioned, let's put up an all-purpose building, okay? You say, what's an all-purpose? Okay, I won't get spiritual now. Put up a gym, okay? A family life center, <laughs> but <laughs> a ministry center, whatever it may be, all-purpose building that, listen, an all-purpose building that has basketball hoops in it, that, that we could play volleyball in there, that if we need to, put a kitchen in there, and uh, if we need it for a bigger event or something, we can have it over there and uh, be able to put in a, a gymnasium. You say, what would that be used for? It only be open a half a day a week. No, why not have it for a place for community activities? okay, and be able to bring the community to us because then all around them is Scripture and Christians and the gospel. Isn't that a novel idea that we draw them to us and bring them onto our property, okay? And so we, we have the building. If you can start picturing it, have the building and then have some parking, however it would lay out to be able to put a gymnasium in, um, we'll leave that up to the layout, the best way to be able to fit it in. The other side of that, we'll have to have our entryway coming in um, from 106, uh, from Sheep Davis Road. There's already an entryway down on that other end. But then here's where we start getting dreaming big. Okay, you say, well, a 400-seat auditorium and a gymnasium, that, that's, not, that's not dreaming big. You know something? That's for people coming here. But our property is not just for us. We got to reach people. And so here's where people started sending in other ideas. So here's the best way that I can envision it to be able to explain it to you down by the gas station on that end of the property. It's our own little strip mall down on the end, okay? Strip mall type building, okay? And you say, what, are we renting them out? No, it would be for ministry outreach. So here's what's been mentioned. Put down there, have a, have a clothing ministry, okay? That we could, we could organize and be open once or twice a week or something and have a clothing ministry down there in one section of it. Next, next to that, why not put in a food pantry, a food bank, okay? We're, we're still getting people here. We're still... It's, it's just all an outreach to, to get to the community, okay? So if we have a clothing ministry, if we have a food bank, well, then this was brought up. Right beside the clothing ministry and the food bank be a great place for prison ministry, wouldn't it? <laughs> so have a place down there to be able to put prison ministry into it with all the storage of Bibles and material and Brother Frank down there. That Listen, it might be that clientele that's that's coming down there that needs a jacket. Well, if we can have someone that's witnessing to them, if we can have someone's got some material, got some Bibles, they're right there. It all fits together, okay? Why not come after that? Here's what was mentioned. A few years ago, we did this downstairs, and uh, we actually assembled um, some John and Romans. If you remember, if some of you that are here, we met on a Friday night and uh, with Baron Precious Seed, and we assembled John and Romans, stapled them, cut them, boxed them up. We did about 5,000 of them on a Friday night. And uh, well, why not have a little area to be able to have scripture assembly? 
not just scripture assembly, but everything that Brother Frank uses for prison ministry through the Rock of Ages. They give all that material to the missionaries, but it all has to be assembled. They print the covers, they print the signatures, they have to be put together, they have to be stapled, they have to be trimmed, and then they have to be boxed. What if we had a little place set up that, that we could bring John and Romans in there, that we could bring um, discipleship material, evangelistic material, bring it in there, and just throughout the week, people can come just sit at a table and, and assemble some gospel material um, that's going to be sent out around the world. So it's been mentioned about a place for that. Then it's been mentioned, what about a hot weather, cold weather shelter? For how many believe there's a homeless problem here in New Hampshire? How many believe there's a homeless problem amongst our veterans? So this was actually mentioned, what if we could have a place that they're not living there. Hold on, I'll get to something else. They're not living there permanently, but on cold nights, on wet nights, we would have a shelter for them to be able to come inside of, have some army cots there. <laughs> um, emphasize it. Listen, let's go after and help our veterans that are living out on the street. But it wouldn't just be for the veterans. Why not be? And I know there's a lot of logistics that would have to be worked out on all of those things. I'm just saying dream big. But what if in that building, if we had some showers, if we had some restrooms, and we had a place that when it gets cold, listen, I'm not, I'm not talking about housing um, at, at this point. I'll keep going. Um, stay in there constantly inside a dorm situation, okay? But what if we have an overnight place that we could start reaching some of our homeless and some of our, um, whether they're not veterans or they are veterans, but be able to emphasize that. I've already had someone approach me saying, do you realize the money that's out there if you're putting in a place that you could say you're trying to help homeless veterans? Checks being written to be able to build buildings, to be able to furnish it, to be able to put in a kitchen, and to be able to help out on that avenue of things? Why not reach our community with that? Well, here's the thing. You see how that would be a ministry outreach building? That we have that place, we have the clothing ministry, we have the food bank, we have the, the prison ministry to be able to help material. They can work some of it off and put them down there assembling scripture. Why not give them things like that to be able to do, okay? And so be able to have a place. You say, how big is that building going to be? I don't know. We'll see what we can fit. But if we're going after it, I said, you know, I could, I could almost see a, a two-story building down there on, on, on that end. And uh, to, to be able to have some things laid out down there. So all of these have been put in, okay? Plus some grass area um, over there just to be able to get kids outside and let them go play, okay? And uh, let them get running around, be able to have a VBS, put our tent up in the parking lot, things like this to be able to carry on. All of that, Lord willing, if it would work out, we'll just put right up top here. <laughs> if you haven't walked over there, it, you just don't get the depth of it until you actually set foot up there on the property, okay? And so I, all of these are ideas that have been sent in. So then let's keep going. That's just the top. What about down bottom by the river? We got five to six acres that's down there beside the river. I told them at the zoning board, they asked, what would that property be used for? I said, just shooting straight with you. I said, I'd love to see a camp put in down there next to the river. And I said, what if for our church, I said, we were able to start with a nice big open air tabernacle down by the river. And I said, if we want to, we can go have services down by the river. I said, we can put in things, we can have service, we can have baptisms down at the river, not in February because I'm not going in the river. The one downstairs, I can stand outside. <laughs> but put in an open-air tabernacle, we can go down and have meeting. What if God allowed us to be able to put in a couple bigger bunkhouses um, to be able to have a camp down there, put in shower facilities, bathroom facilities, put in a ball field, another one down there next to the river, down in the flat area. You go look over that edge, it, it's already graded out and flat. It, I mean, it's almost set up perfectly right now to be able to go in and put some topsoil and be able to plant something and be able to have that and be able to spread that out. 
It's also been mentioned, hey, if God would open the doors, and I even had someone even this morning that brought up and said, you know, it'd be nice we can we can get that that house down there on the corner. <laughs> And then we can buy that trailer halfway up the, up, the, up the hill there. And then we'd own everything from here to North Pembroke except for the gas station. Someone said we need the gas station too. And we'll keep it as a gas station and church members get 20 cents off a gallon. <laughs> Why not? Get the alcohol out of the store so we're not selling it. But listen, all of this. Well, why not? Someone sent through an article. I read every word of it. Of... If we can work it out, because there, there's still a, a whole hillside of woods going down to the bottom side, and they sent me through an article of this ministry that started putting in. They were helping out people with the homeless. They had they had uh, clothing ministries. They had food banks. They had addiction recovery, just trying to help out. And then they saw the need for housing, and they started putting in a little colony of these little mini houses. I mean, we're talking like a twelve by twelve fully self-contained mini house. But in order to get in there, they had to, uh, of course, be faithful and be part of the, the addiction recovery and ministry at the, at the ministry there and be working through their classes. That's all been brought up if that could be done down through there. Now, some are probably sitting back saying, okay, 15 acres isn't enough. So I'm just saying there's some people that are dreaming big at Granite State Baptist Church. You say, Pastor, how's that all going to be done? We're going to do it as the Lord, and, and all of that might not fit over there. But I, I wanted to lay out to you the thought process of our church. As God opens doors, let me come back to this building. It's been brought up about a Christian school. I think we need a Christian school sooner than we need a lot of things. I believe we could have one by this fall. I think the need is there. Don't worry. The need is there. But what about downstairs? Well, here's what I wanted our kids to hear. What if we left our downstairs just as open as it is right now and turned that into a youth center? I'm not against putting a ping pong table down there, put a foosball table down there, put some couches and, and uh, within eye of everybody so the teenagers aren't slipping over onto a couch. But why not have a, have a place and just leave it set up, listen, for, for young adults, not just for teenagers, for, young, for a place for young adults to be able to come in and to be able to have a safe place to be able to relax and to be able to have a good time, get them out of the world a place for the teenagers to be able to come in, that they're not coming in necessarily to a, a church building, but they're able to come in, I don't care if it's used in an afternoon, if it's used in an evening, have a place for them to be able to come to, okay? You say, well, this would be divided off into Sunday school space. What if out there in our, in our beautiful foyer, what if at least on one side, that beautiful nursery that's over there, we'll have a new nursery, by the way. And by the way, it would be separate babies than toddlers, two separate nurseries, okay? But what if this beautiful nursery here, because we already have a washer and a dryer in it, we already have a kitchen sink with a countertop, what if that turned into a nice profits chamber for missionaries coming through? Just put a stand-up shower out here in the corner. What if, and I don't think we'd need it, but what if we took the, the, the other half where that entrance is, they could have their own entrance coming up the stairs there, and uh, what if we divided that half off where we already have a stand-up shower and put another prophet's chamber over on that side for missionaries and pastors that are coming through to be able to have a place for them to be able to go and to be able to rest and for us to be able to be a blessing. Can I say this? We're just dreaming big. Now, your thought process may be just like mine right now. How in the world are we going to do all that? I told John Bunnell this morning if he'd write a check. No, I said, <laughs> I said here's the thing. It's on the capacity right now. If someone came up, and I don't want to scare you, there's a fine line, okay, between overwhelming you 
and asking you to dream big and expect great things from God. And I haven't sat down and started adding. I haven't started. We're going to have to wait and get plans. But I said, I honestly believe if someone came along with a $5 million check, I said, we could have it gone within two years. I said, we'll just, now listen, this isn't about making a bigger name for Granite State Baptist Church. That's not what this is about. This is about to God be the glory. And what could God use Granite State Baptist Church to be able to accomplish here in our region? I'm not just saying conquer. Some have brought up, what if, what if, what if we had a little Bible college here? What if we had, I mean, there, the, the thoughts and input are endless as far as what's coming in and what God's doing. And so, did I miss anything? I think about everything's been put in. And then what the property can be used for as far as once these um, facilities are in place, whether it be, I mean, having community nights, having the parking lot, the gym, having all of that open, inviting people onto the property, all of that. I don't think it's just a place for a day and a half a week. So I've told some people this in the past week and a half. I said, I'm an old-fashioned traditionalist. You're probably figuring that out. And I said, back in the years gone past, I said, the church building was the hub of the community. I said, that one building that they met in for church on Sunday, it was the one-room schoolhouse Monday through Friday. It was the voting booth. In some cases, it was the um, courtroom. <laughs> it was um, for community meetings, town hall. Everything took place in that building. And I said, what if God would allow us to be able to, here in Concord, get to the place, hey, you want something done? You want the best? Hey, I'm talking about even offerings being given and investing. You want to invest in Concord? The best place you can put it is Granite State Baptist Church. You ought to go over and see what they're doing. You want to help the homeless? Best place is Granite State Baptist Church. You want to help addicts? Best place is Granite State Baptist Church. You want to help the youth? You need to go see what Granite State Baptist is doing. It all ought to come back. You say, Pastor, that... that We've got all these other organizations. You know the one thing they're not getting when they walk in all them other organizations? The Bible. The Bible. We've got more to offer than eventually just a place to, bas to bounce a basketball. We've got more to offer. More to offer than just putting shoes on their feet and a coat on their back. And I'm thankful for doing both of those things. We have more to offer. We have something that will change them for eternity. And so, enlarge the place of thy tent. Let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed. Let me say this. I want to see something established. For the next generation, thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. Do you realize there was a next generation that was going to be doing something for the Lord? And I want to see that generation raised up that they can inherit something, inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. inhabited. Are we dreaming big enough? If you're discouraged, if you're saying, Pastor, that's just not for me, that's just, I want the 20 people in church in that quaint little one room, can I say this? God may have other plans. And we need to reach our community. Okay? We need to reach people. Well, I just like the quaint. I'm not, I'm not preaching about the size of a church. Okay? We do everything we can do to be able to reach people. God puts them in the body. God puts them in the body. And I just want to reach as many people as we possibly can with everything that God's given to us. It's going to be an outreach. It's going to use the property for the glory of God, okay? I can't get into 100 questions this afternoon, okay? And so I want you just to stew on that for a while. 
if there are questions about it and come back and come back and ask. Okay? And uh, these are just dreams. Can I it, it's not that pastors standing up here and saying, "Well, bless God, this is what we're going to do with all of this." Let me ask this, and some are not here that have talked to me, text me, several things. If you have talked to me, text me, given an idea by email, anything about anything future for property and ministry and anything can be done, can you raise your hand? Okay? So I just want you to see it's not pastor standing up here saying this is what we're going to push through. I'm saying these are dreams that people are saying, "Can boy, if God would let us do this, here's an idea. Okay? There's that fine line of saying, well, he's, he's already got all these plans and saying, no, this is what our church is saying. Okay? I wanted you to see that there are some things that are going forward and uh, seeing what the Lord's doing, okay? And uh, so, all right. Do I dare say, do you have a comment or a thought? <laughs> Briefly, because we're going to go into a communion service and ask the Lord to be able to bless and be able to do great things. Amen? To God be the glory. If I told you some of the designs and some things that people were thinking of, you'd say, man, that's crazy. Can we even do all of that? I'm telling you what, people are dreaming big. Dreaming big. And I'm so thankful. Mike Nagley just texted me and said, don't forget the airport. <laughs> we don't have room for an airport. A helipad? <laughs> I'm just kidding. When I... <laughs> All right, let's take our Bibles, turn over to Hebrews chapter number 10. Hebrews chapter number 10. As you're turning to Hebrews 10, here's what we've been advised on, and when I say we, feel free to go talk to Brother Don, go talk to Brother John, talk to the other men. Here's what we've been advised on, what I've been advised on. Once we get this enclosed in our property, in our, in our name, let's go ahead and get this all into one lot, okay? Get rid of the property lines here, then we're not dealing with setbacks between the buildings and things like this, okay? Get this all put into one property, one lot, and then sit down with an architect and start laying this out. And Lord willing, by about August or so, if we were able to, even July, just depends. Try to see what we can do and try to get at least some drawings of what we could do over here. That way we could put something up. I don't know, I don't know how you are. I was able to walk into a dirt floor and a 50 by 60 metal building and this is exactly how we thought it would be when it was done and say, this is what I think God can do with this piece of property. He's allowing the same things to be happening over there, but not everybody can drive on a piece of property and, and picture all of that taking place. We're going to try to get some visuals, try to get some drawings with some ideas to be able to put it up and say, hey, here's what can be done, okay? And uh, not all at one time, and don't worry, I'm not, I don't want to go five, six, seven million dollars into debt. I'm not planning on that. I just told you if Brother John can write a check, then we'll be okay. I mean, it'd just be fine. There's nobody here that can write a five million dollar check, Okay. And I don't even know. I'm just throwing that, that, that amount out there. There's nobody here that can do that. But you know what? God can sure do a lot with willing servants, can he? And God can, when he says, prove me and see if I'll not open the windows of heaven. Who can tell? Who can tell? Wouldn't it be a blessing? I believe God's able. Hebrews chapter 10, let's get our hearts and our minds towards communion. If I can, have the four men start making their way um, down this direction. Be seated right here on the front row. If you're going to help with communion, um, come down and be ready for that. Hebrews chapter 10. I just want to spend a little bit of time and just read some scripture. 
I'm not going to comment a whole lot on it because I just want us to read what the Bible says, okay? Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 1, the Bible says, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. And we know we're talking about the Old Testament sacrifices. We know that that blood that they shed year after year after year could never take away any of those sins, none whatsoever. If it could, then they could make that one sacrifice and be done with it. But there was a remembrance year after year after year. Verse 6, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above, when he said, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Now, who is saying that? Jesus. Not my will, but thine be done. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oft times the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Christ, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water." I want to encourage us in this subject matter. We have mentioned here both the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and his flesh that was torn for us. In fact, we have access, the Bible says in verse number 20, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. May I remind us of the death and burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus? That is, we partake of the elements, we use unleavened bread and we use unfermented grape juice to resemble the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a time for us to remember what Jesus endured for each and every one of us. May I say this is the Lord's table. If you're here today and you are not a child of God, this is not for you. This is for those that are saved, and I would say baptized. I would say as we gather together as Granite State Baptist Church, we are in agreement of doctrine and practice, but there is also the element of making sure that we are right with the Lord. 
We're reminded over in Corinthians that we are to examine ourselves. It's not some, something that I come to you and I examine you and I have not sat down and done interviews before service to see if you are right with God and see if your, your heart is empty of sin and you're walking in purity before the Lord. But the Bible does remind us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that we are to examine ourselves and let us eat of that bread and drink of that cup. May I remind us of this, that there ought to be a time that we search our hearts and lives, make sure that we're right with God, make sure that we're right with each other, and make sure there's nothing between us and the Savior. This promotes purity in the church. It's a realization of the holiness of what Christ has done for us. But then it's also a time of celebration because we're reminded of the victory that Jesus won on the cross through his death, burial, and resurrection. We're reminded in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that we're to do this till he comes. And so we're celebrating the hope of the soon return of our Savior that's coming back. So once our hearts are right with him and we examine ourselves and we're right with God, guess what? We rejoice that we're right with him and we rejoice that he's coming back. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm with Brother Shepherd back here. Even so, come Lord Jesus. And if he were to come before we partake of the Lord's table, then so be it. If anybody's left and it's your religious ritual, then you can come down and partake all that you want. I just won't be here to give it to you and to serve you, okay? I'm thankful for the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. I read Hebrews chapter 10 just to remind us of the sacrifice that Jesus made. And I'm thankful that as we're reminded over in Titus that he tasted death for every man once and for all. We don't believe that this grape juice actually becomes the blood of Christ. We don't believe that the bread actually becomes the body of Christ. It's symbolic. It's representative of that. The body and blood of Christ are in heaven today. I believe the blood is sprinkled upon the mercy seat. I believe the body of Christ, he is alive and well, seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And so we rejoice at the sacrifice. This is a time of remembrance, but then may it also be a time of rejoicing. And so let's have every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to ask Miss June to come to the piano, and we're just going to take a couple moments and let us examine our hearts Prepare that we are right with the Lord, that we are ready to partake. Examine yourself before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for this remembrance and this rejoicing time that you've given to us. Lord, we're so thankful for this finished work of Jesus on Calvary. Lord, for his death and his burial, but then, Lord, for his resurrection. And Lord, we know that one day, because you rose from the dead, that if you choose to take us through death, that Lord will raise from the dead to be with you. And Lord, thank you for that blessed hope of your soon return. And I pray, Lord, as our church, as we partake of the Lord's table, Lord, I pray it'd be a wonderful time reflecting and rejoicing about Jesus. Thank you for what you've done for us. May we live holy and righteously and godly in this present world because of the sacrifice of Christ. 
May your will be done in our lives now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll prepare to take of the elements. The Bible says, first of all, that they took the bread. And I've got four of our men. Now, here's how I'm going to ask this. I know things are a little bit different. If you can just remain seated, the men will come and they'll serve you. They do have their mask on. Um, we do have this double stacked, okay? So your wafer is in the bottom cup and the juice is in the top cup. And so we do ask that you take both cups at one time. This eliminates the additional contact to be able to come before you and to be able to hand that out. So if you just reach in, just take the one that, uh, that you touch first, okay? And so I'm gonna ask the men to stand and if they would, I'm going to ask Brother Chamberlain, if you would, to return thanks for the body of Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that you are our God. And from before the beginning of time as we know it, Lord, there was an agreement between you and your only begotten Son that he would come to this earth in the fullness of time. And he would walk among us knowing that he would die a terrible death on Calvary's cross. But Lord, he went willingly and spilled that precious blood so that we might be here today. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
aren't you thankful for the body of the Lord Jesus? Amen. The Bible says, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. The reason I read Hebrews chapter 10, where it talks about the veil being rent, and we know according to the Bible, the veil in the physical temple was rent from top to bottom, but the greater meaning behind that is the Bible teaches us that the body of the Lord Jesus Christ was whipped and beaten beyond recognition. And those pictures that we see today, or maybe statues that are seen uh, they in no way truly represent and resemble what Jesus went through for us, the broken body. But the Bible says he also shed his blood for us. And so I'm going to ask Brother Whittier, if you would, to stand and just give thanks to the Lord for his blood that was shed for each and every one of us. You would uh, subject your only begotten son to a death, a cruel death, Father. It shows how much you loved him. Father, we certainly thank you that <clears throat> through your willingness that the shed blood has covered our sins, Father. Covered the sins of the world, those who will accept it. And Father, we certainly thank you so much that we know where we will spend eternity, truly give you the glory for all that's done and said. In this place, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. The Bible also said over in the book of Hebrews that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. And I'm thankful for the Lord Jesus Christ. His blood shed once. Mm. Yes. Shed once for the sin of all mankind and all humanity. And he said this, after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. I still have written beside the notes in my Bible here, <clears throat> that this could be the last time that we partake of this until we partake of it with our Savior in the kingdom. There's coming a day that we'll stand before Him, and I'm so thankful and looking forward to that day. We're going to close in a word of prayer in just a moment, but uh, I want to sing just a verse, if we can, turn over to page number three. I just want to sing a verse of amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amen. And I'm so thankful for amazing grace. Why don't we stand together? We'll just sing that first verse. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound saved a wretch like me. I'm so thankful for it. Have we dreamed big enough today? Anybody have any testimony or comment they'd like to add to it? Skyscraper. Uh, all right, now he brought it up. My brother's church down in Haines City, Florida, right downtown, has a nine story building. So you say skyscraper, but. <laughs> all things were made by him and for him and then we can have taste and see that the Lord is good <laughs> there you go 
All in favor of an ice cream booth next door. Praise God. Oh, isn't that a blessing? Speaking of ice cream, next week the teenagers will have their, um, what are we calling it, commissary or something? Canteen downstairs with some waters and coffee and snacks and everything that'll be downstairs monster drinks is that true only for zeke five dollars a piece <laughs> so we are going to have that downstairs on sunday afternoons so that'll be up and running starting this next sunday okay anything else anybody want to add to the dream for next door kelly a grand piano next to that a grand piano but are we going to have a church split over whether it's an a, a ivory white, not it wouldn't be ivory white, but pearl white or ebony black? One of each. There's something just classy about a... Anything else? Hey, keep dreaming big. Why not? Fire pits. Fire pit. Boy, that's a good idea. Imagine if we just gathered down by the river and had some fire pits just on a Saturday night to be able to fellowship together. Boy, that's a great idea. Someone else? Um, oh, goodness. For, uh, little boardroom for kids to play in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A great, a toy, that's a good idea. Remind me of that. A toy room for the kids to be able to be in before church or after church. Why before or after? Because during, they're in church. Hey, man. What you got, Levi? Fire. We'll put that in the fire pit. Contain it. Okay? A bouncy house. Not in the winter time. <laughs> we can put them inside a the gymnasium. Someone else? Dreaming big. I think we're really going to need a heated dome over that ball field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Orphanage would be tremendous. You know, it's been brought up, and I think we need to buy half a Concord eventually. It's been brought up, not, orphanage, it's been brought up for addiction recovery, housing to be able to put in. It's been brought up about an um, unwed mother's house, a place to be able to bring them in, be able to help them, all of those things. We don't need more than 15 acres. What's that? So there's an empty mall not too far away. <laughs> an empty mall. I started looking into it when we were first looking for a rental place. Anybody else? Hey, this is wonderful. Tracks in the bookstore? Tracks in the bookstore. You can guarantee that. Guarantee it. And all over the property. So if someone's just sitting there and they pick it up, what's this piece that's written on the front here? Speaking of that, we just got in last night, 10,000 door hangers. Um, and so we'll be getting them out Thursday night just for you to be able to take a look at them. And then we're going to systematically be working our way across Concord and the surrounding regions and just going through and putting door hangers on there and uh, getting the word out, okay? And so it'll be great exercise. How many looking for an exercise program? <laughs> door hangers for the church, okay? Someone else with Dreaming Big? Why not? We need a bigger platform, right? Yes. Yeah. You probably would have cut loose a little bit more with that preaching today, wouldn't you, preacher? So the new pastor down in Florida where we went, his last name is Parsons. And so I asked my brother, has someone said that that's redundant to call him Pastor Parsons? I said, it's kind of like Sahara Desert. I mean, Sahara means the great desert. So you're saying the desert, desert. And he's like, yeah, it's been said about 1,500 times, but thank you. Anyone else? It's dreaming big, isn't it? Dreaming big. Who else? Swimming. Brother Frank, what do you got? A, smoke, a, a smoker hey, room for kitchen outside. Room. That is a tremendous idea. <laughs> we're not in Alabama. When we say smoke room up here, we're talking about for smoking meat outside, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, we're just dreaming big, asking the Lord, is there anything too hard for God? No. Brother Andrew. We're already doing the cafe and the ice cream shop. Can you get either a golden crowl or a <laughs> <laughs> Somebody needs to go get a chicken. You know how many times, and listen, if you need to take off, take off. You know how many times I've thought at some point when we get this all developed, we can have a drive through coffee shop right in here in this parking lot right here? Oh, my God. Uh, anyway, we're dreaming big, okay? 
All right. We love y'all. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you Thursday night for Bible study. Online Tuesday night for devotion, okay? 7 o'clock. You are dismissed.